The starting rate here is eight meters tall. I'm not sure what the starting hill at the Worlds was. It was pretty. It was pretty tall for most riders. It was a mini Supercross hill, and I'm pretty sure it was, uh, if not half as tall as this, or three quarters of the height. I'm not really sure, but. And he wants to know, Sofisa, how does it feel? How does your body feel when you compress coming off that hill with so much speed when you attack that first jump at a Supercross event? Oh wow, man! I mean, it definitely gets. It takes a lot of getting used to it. It's nothing easy, and. That's what we train day in and day out for, and um, it feels a bit weird at first. You know, it's something we're not really fond of coming from, you know, like an older background, riding flatter hills and tracks that are more, you know, rolly and not so sharp and stuff. So, I mean, this is this is definitely the pinnacle of of BMX. These Supercross events are awesome. The speed is incredible, and the jumps are definitely huge. I know we're getting ready here for the women's main event at the UCI BMX Supercross Series presented by Swatch. But our next question is from Mike Fields in the United States. It's for Safiso, and he wants to know, will the box win the Tri-Nationals this year? And tell um, us what a box is. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, the box is the national rugby team, and the Tri-Nations is a competition held between Australia, New Zealand, and South Africa. Um, you know, three huge rugby-playing nations, and definitely South Africa is going to take that with ease. I mean, the guys have been unbelievable this year and been playing really well, so I hope they'll follow in their footsteps and do something positive next year. Uh, we got a question from uh, Christian. He wanted to know, what do you think about adding the junior class to the Supercross series and uh, would it mean less breaks and more BMX? Uh, the, I'm not really sure what, what your thoughts are. There's some junior riders here now. Uh, there's maybe a couple that are in this women's final event that are old enough, but uh, I don't know if they would be able to handle this class. There's a few that would be able to handle this, this track, but what are your thoughts? Um, I mean, my thoughts are, I mean, if you if you up to race Supercross, you should be up to race the top riders in the world. I mean, Sam Willoughby last year at the age of 16, he made a semi-final in Denmark, you know, and that just goes to show that it's it, like your age doesn't matter as long as you can get your head in there and ride a track the same speed as the big guys. It shouldn't be a problem at all. Okay, we are getting ready for the women's final, but again, we have another star-studded email that was sent in at ucisx at aol.com. It's from Randy Stumphauser. Randy, one of the, 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 the best professionals, always concentrating on racing. He's not here. He's at home getting ready for the NBL title. He wants to know where the after party is tonight. <laughs> I can't believe it. I've never seen Randy party ever at a race. So, Randy, the after party is going to be tomorrow on my 24 hours of flying home back to the United States. <laughs> <laughs> well, for the rest of the guys who are going to be here, it's going to be at the um, Frankie Bananas. It's a small, <laughs> small shady place around town. And um, let's get ready for this elite women's final. Okay, the women are loaded for the final of the Supercross. Here we go. Sarah Walker, who's been straining all day from that crash, doesn't look like that crash affected her at all right now. She's going into the first turn with that lead, and she's getting ahead of Gabrielle Diaz just a little bit with Malier Portier coming on the inside. But it looks like Sarah Walker is going to take an impressive lead going into turn number two at the Supercross here. Sarah Walker with ease winning into that second turn right now. Gabriela Diaz, the veteran out of Argentina in that second spot. The two French riders, Maggie Le Portier and Eva Ayou battling for that third spot. Mentlin Van Burton out of Holland in that fifth position. It looks like it's going to be Sarah Walker, Gabriela Diaz. Oh, and we're looking at a photo finish between the few two French riders, Eva Ayou and Maggie Le Portier. At least Post seems to be down on that second straight. Don't know if she's up yet. It looks like Portier just came in for that third place finish, but that's an awesome result for Sarah Walker. She went down in the last minutes of elite women's practice. She was in the medical unit. She was debating whether or not even to race today. She was just going to ride around the track. You saw her in the, in the motos. She was a little bit tentative. She was holding back third round. She went out, all out, got that first place finish, got her inside gate pick, and she took that start and just acted like she never fell and had no injuries and she was decisive on her win just getting out in the front and never looking back well wow, pete that definitely was an awesome lap out of sarah walker riding good all weekend and managing to take that elite women's final win well wow, that's an awesome result for sarah walker uh, i interviewed her yesterday and she said right now a highlight for her is that she won the uh, that was the first time trial that she's won and she uh she said she picked a new song. She said she really, music is a big influence for her in her racing and really getting her head into the game. She changed her, uh, her song for the time trial and it seemed to work for her there. And she might have been listening to that song before the race started. But Sarah Walker is your winner here at the UCI Supercross round number two in South Africa. She takes the win with Gabrielle Diaz. That's an awesome result for Gabrielle Diaz. She's been around for years. She was one of the winningest girls a few years back. When all those other girls came in and stepped in, Gabrielle's still there. 
but she came ahead of Eva Aliarod, who's been one of the strong girls as well. Actually, Eva got second. I'm <laughs> well, it would be nice if Gabrielle got second, yeah. but she did. <laughs> yeah, but, I'm, but I mean, the girls have been running really, really yes. good today. It looks like we haven't had a lot of bad injuries, and uh, they seem to have been doing a really good job. Okay, we're going to have an interview right here with Sarah Walker, the winner of the Supercross round. Yep. Ready? All right, we're down here with an elated Sarah Walker. I know you I know you really well, and you get stressed out a little bit easy. Sometimes you had an injury to the hand. Tell us about that. I fell off in practice this morning and I wrenched my wrist back, but I typed it up good and sucked up. <laughs> but uh, you know what? You look like your confidence was building as the qualifiers were going down. I kind of took it easy for motos because I didn't want to work my wrist too hard, but... I just let it all out in the final and had a good race. All right, you got another Supercross win under your belt. Relief after the World Championships. How's it compare? Um, it feels pretty good. I have gained a lot of confidence lately, and, yeah, I think this made a huge difference. All right, well, there's your champion, everybody, Sarah Walker. Thank you very much. So as you can see, Sarah Walker it looks like she didn't have any injury as she went into that second turn, just jumping all the jumps, getting ahead of all the other girls, and it was just a great, great race for her. Yeah, I mean, taking control with ease and just running away with it, Pete. I mean, Gabriela Diaz riding good all weekend, but I think the big standout for her is Sarah Walker for sure.